Welcome. Welcome, everybody, to another installment of Wednesday Wind Down with Dan and Friends. This is a webinar and YouTube show that's born of frustrated hikers and frustrated beer, whiskey, bourbon aficionados, right? So we can't do either in person, then so we can't, you know, shoot the breeze about hiking over a beverage. So now we got to do it virtually. So that's what this is all about. Um, I'm Dan Conger. Uh, I'm the host on this one. And tonight I'm drinking a Sierra Nevada pale ale. Nice. And with us tonight is... Uh, I'm Kelly Mamer. I am a, a good friend of Dan's who has been part of his uh, hiking uh, group, especially going to the Sierras for the last uh, few years. So and we're going to talk about that a bit tonight. Uh, and I am uh, drinking a whiskey. A, I chose a, a Diamond Peak by Stranahan's, thinking, you know, it's got the mountains in the name. So is it straight, no rocks? Absolutely. Neat. Always. <laughs> Always. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, I tried to do that one time with some 12-year-old scotch, and the bartender's like, no, 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 you do not dilute this. Like, okay, okay, got yeah. it. So <laughs> tonight, we're going to talk about a classic, this is your travelogue style, we're going to talk about a classic Sierra trip that is North Lake to South Lake. Um, this is a trip that I did with uh, Kelly and a few other folks, and I did this a years before, maybe five years before Kelly went on this trip. And I did it a slightly different route. So um, Kelly's going to tell us about it. So right over to you. Great. So, yeah, I'm going to just kind of talk a little bit about uh, the trip. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I've got lots of photos. And hopefully we'll just kind of go through. And Dan will definitely jump in with uh, his thoughts and memories and such. So um, this was a great trip. Uh, so, again, I told you my name is Kelly. This was the very first trip I went on in the Sierras. Um, so I had been uh, taking the WBC. Uh, I'm not like Dan. I hadn't been backpacking for years and years. I only started uh, five or six years ago. And um, after a couple of years of just doing the class and getting to know some people and, and taking on some leadership type roles, um, Dan in, invited me to join uh, his group of uh, his regulars to do a week long trip in the Sierras. And I was extremely, uh, extremely excited and extremely nervous at the same time because uh, like many people who just start out, you probably think, okay, one night's easy, um, seven nights, how, you know, how different is that? And uh, so this here is a, is a picture of, I think, the first day and, and, you know, you pretty much fall in love when you see this kind of thing. It's hard to uh, ever want to do anything again. So uh, there I am, um, like I said, first trip, uh, nice bright shirt, uh, got, got all the gear ready to go. Uh, and so it's very exciting. Um, the biggest thing was interesting that, you know, I, I know Dan has mentioned this in previous talks, if anyone's heard, really the, the packing is the same for every trip from a overnight to a, a week long. The big thing is thinking food. And, and I have to admit, I was, uh, I was really worried about trying to think of what to eat. And uh, no, I, that, I, no, was, no. I didn't, I didn't want to have to be uh, uh, trying to, we eat, wouldn't, we food. wouldn't let you eat the, yeah, eat find more. food on the trail. <laughs> However, but, that marmot might've tried to eat your food. Well, and, and they definitely did. Yeah. And so it's funny. I, it's just, um, the, the real lesson is, is, you know, you just, you just, you want to plan out and kind of have things that you really like to want to eat. Um, I, I went overboard this first year. This was a spreadsheet. I just want to show. It's kind of funny where I broke everything I ate down into like the calories for protein and the calories for carbs. And I was trying to, you know, be real scientific about the whole thing. And um, I don't do that anymore as a <laughs> short story. But uh, I mean, the other thing that was great was uh, obviously, um, you know, I, I taking the WBC, I felt pretty, pretty packed in, uh, pretty uh, locked in. So that was pretty cool. I, I got to say, though, on the on the food thing, that is kind of intimidating because it's hard to know what's too much and what's not enough because, you know, maybe you might not get hungry until later on and you're always worried about running out. But it, I, even though over 10, 15 years of long trips, I still overpack food, although I've done a lot better. Well, so quick, it, quick, yeah, quick aside that that first year, one of my things was trail mix because I, I knew I liked trail mix on on day trip. So I thought I ended up buying besides your basic M&Ms and raisins and peanuts. I had other nuts. I had craisins. I had uh, pitas. I had uh, hemp. I had so many different things and I packaged like so much. I ended up, I think I counted, I ended up almost like a half a pound of trail mix a day. It, it, you think about you have a pound of maybe a pound, a bit of food a day and, and half of mine was trail mix. I was just like, this is going to work. And I think it was the third day before I finished the bag from day one. And, and I never really got through the bag of day two. And I think I carried 
two and a half pounds of, of food for five days, seven days that I didn't. Ooh, yeah. Uh, so that is a lot. I, I did the, I did the exact same thing, but with cliff bars, my, my first big trip. <laughs> yeah. So you learn. So this is the group. Um, some of the, yeah, anybody who happened to see last week, you would have seen Sandra over there on the, uh, on the left, Sandra and Rich are a, a married couple, beautiful people. Uh, you've got, uh, uh, well, Rich is in the middle. Sorry, Dan is uh, in between the two of them. Dan's brother Mike is over on the side. I'm the one that didn't get the memo about the doll clothing you were supposed to wear on a trip. Apparently, so I got the nice bright orange. That's new guy, trip. what can you do? I didn't really know. I didn't know Mike really at all. I didn't know Rich really at all. I'd met Sandra a couple of weeks before, a couple of months, sorry, before that. Dan, I knew probably for a couple of years just through the class. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I remember when I met with uh, Sandra and got to know her a bit, she talked about this great group of four people and how wonderful they were together and how it was such a perfect group and how everybody was in sync with each other. So I admit being a little intimidated to, to, uh, to break into that. Um, no, no, no pressure there. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's funny because it really does matter having a group that you bond with out there. You spend a lot of time, you kind of want to have the same goals. Um, but I couldn't have found a better group of people and they're now lifelong friends. So it's a awesome. Great thing. And not to mention that, uh, well, there's that stupid marmot again, but the tent there was one that was that Dan, you lent me that first year. I had that's a, right. you have a heavy, heavy, heavy tent. tent, I think. <laughs> <clears throat> right. So that was a way to, even that's, even that's heavy by some of the standards now. Sure. It's a, it a two person it tent. A, it was great. I think my 10 essentials, you just helped me dial in stuff so well before I even went on that first trip, you know, yeah. and, uh, great, great experience. So, um, this is the trip. I, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the map. This area is up uh, to the uh, west of Bishop, California. So you kind of head up 395 to Bishop and then head into the mountains and you head towards, there's a road that goes by South Lake and ends up at North Lake. So this particular trip was a, uh, a loop style, but we ended in a different spot that we started, which has its own logistical uh, challenges, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Before, um, before so, you, oh, before you leave this slide, go ahead, finish your thought and I'll add, and I'll interject. Yeah, I was just, well, what I was going to say was this, so this particular trip, I highlighted on here the, the uh, part of the JMT that we were actually on. So this trip kind of had a combination of stuff that was not very, you know, popular, a little more uh, isolated. And then the JMT, which anybody that's been there or knows much about it knows it's a, it's a veritable freeway out there. Um, but you know, it gave us a chance uh, you know, the first couple of days were to from North Lake to Lamar Cole there, this area were uh, super, super intense because it's going up to 13,000 feet right away. So it really helped me, you know, get my mindset right before I went about making sure I had my fitness. And we did a lot of training, which was, uh, which was good. I didn't, I didn't go into this with my eyes closed. I was pretty, pretty eyes wide open. So. Yeah. I, I, I remember that, that first couple of days on, on that section before we hit the JMT, um, I made it, made a comment to you about, the JMT and, and the isolation we were seeing. Do you, do you remember that? I do. Yeah. yeah it's pretty funny because you kept talking about, we really hadn't, we'd seen like two people the first, I don't know, two and a half days. And you kept saying, Oh, wait till we get to the JMT. Wait till we get to the JMT. And I was like, ah, I can't be that bad. I had in my mind that maybe we'd see, you know, a person an hour or something instead of a person a day. And uh, I'm pretty sure we hit the junction and you said, here it is the JMT. And we turned and turned left and started heading uh, south. And I think it took seven seconds before someone came up. Right, someone came right direction. along. Yeah. The, yeah. the other thing I wanted to say about the, this route and this map is this, uh, in, the, in the description, I call this a breathtaking variation because Lamarck Cole getting up to 17,000 foot on essentially morning of day two um, is definitely that a lot of that is it's either trailless or nearly trailless or unimproved trail. Yeah. Another way to do this route is to go over Paiute Pass, which is slightly to the north, and hike more of the John Muir Trail. So you get a lot of the same scenery. Um, you'll just spend more time around people. So yeah. this is definitely a harder entry into it. Uh, and it, but if you're if you're really fit and you're really advanced, you could turn this into an even shorter trip. But you're gonna pay for it going over Lamar Cole with a full pack and a full bear can. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it was, a, it was a challenge. And I mean, if part of it, your plan, you had done all the, the legwork, you, you kind of plan these things out well in advance and, and we all take advantage of, the, of the, your hard work, but uh, you had uh, planned on doing a little bit more on this trip. You were going to include a, maybe another day into an area called the Ionian Basin, which is just to the south of, of Muir Pass. Um, and that kind of didn't come off because we just were having some, some issues with the, uh, um, struggling with altitude with with some of the some of the groups so we ended up kind of cutting it which 
is a good sign of the flexibility and everything right. because you know you have to you have to be able to know what you really want to do out there which is i mean some people are through hikers that they know they want to hit you know 200 miles in what are 20 days and do the jmt um i appreciate our trips that are, are a little more flexible you know we, and almost nice. every year we've had a little flexibility really yeah than, absolutely so anyway so i'm just going to go through it a little bit day by day um just kind of talk about some of the highlights so again this was the, the first day and again this is like right off the bat, as we're heading over Lamar Cole, it's 13,000 feet. You've got all these peaks around that are all kind of 12, 13,000, you know, all over the place, just rugged stone. You know, you're out of no trees, you know, you're getting out of the tree line, you know. Yeah. So that first day, but then, you know, you con you put that and contrast that with <clears throat> just these gorgeous alpine lakes, you know, a little bit of just some little trees. And, and then you can see this lake from, from a thousand different directions. As you keep hiking, you see it again. I mean, it's, it's amazing the number of photos you take. So, uh, uh it was so beautiful that first, uh, first day getting up, uh, to, uh, to this lake where we camped, it was really a struggle for me that first night. I admit that, that, and I've learned a bit about myself about altitude. I can pretty much handle it. And I'm pretty good at once I get that first night, I could stay up at pretty much any elevation and not really have troubles. I've been like that every year since, but that first night for me is always, it's we more typically recently we've been camping the first night before we start a big hike, just doing it differently. And even that camping at six or 7,000 feet is still that first night's a challenge, but I like getting that first night out of the way. This, this one was a long, 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 long night. I do remember that. So, but and, that's fine. And, and I think that is not besides having the experience and the gear and the conditioning, you need to, a lot of this is getting to know yourself, how you sleep, if you're cold, if you're hot, are you always hungry? Or are you never yeah. quite as hungry? Does your stomach bother you? Understanding some of those things about yourself um, is is one of those wonderful experience things and kind of helps you do better on your trip. Yeah, this first year, I most nights I was just awake a lot and I was always kind of thinking, man, I love the days, but the nights are terrible. And I remember talking to uh, Jim Kurtz after this trip and he said he's not a great sleeper, but he he just relaxes. Even if he's not sleeping, he realizes, he just thinks about the fact that he's resting his body and that makes him feel good anyway. And that really helped me. And ever since then, even if I'm not sleeping, I'm, I'm, I don't spread about it. I just know that at least I'm resting and, and nice. it's made all the difference in the world. So cool. Yeah. So the next day we started going over and this is right. Uh, this is going up to Lamar Cole. I remember I put this picture in cause I, I'm, Canadian dual citizen, but originally from Canada. And I remember thinking, wow, how beautiful. It looks like a maple leaf and snow. It's just like all made for me. And I was so don't, excited about it don't until, it. until we're in it. <laughs> At which yeah, point you're yeah. like, all right. I, I didn't sign up for all this. You know, uh, it was a, it was quite a little hike up and that, that led right to the coal. Um, a, a coal is just a notch between rocks. It's, it's, uh, there's other names for it. They, it kind of we we got into the into the weeds trying to figure out exactly what the difference was a coal and a notch and a and a break and and whatever. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, so you had, you had no trail, very very little as as far as, yeah. as trails any on any of these. No, it was like this a lot. I mean, there was snow we crossed. There was just a lot of places where you were you'd look way ahead and you say, "I have to get there." Let's just you know take the smart way to get there. Nice. Um, this was the view from Lamar Cole. And again, this, I think this is still my favorite view from years of going to the Sierras is just, I never forgot this, just the juxtaposition of everything, the lakes, the, the rock, not a lot of trees, but just the stark, stark mountains and the snow and the glaciers and the uh, beautiful. I just love looking at that picture. Um, I didn't love it as much that day because we still had to get down to one of those lakes and it was getting long in the day, but we needed to get down and get to water and, uh, and pick our way down through. There's really no trail there either. Just had to pick our way through those rocks down there. So, but once we got there, it was beautiful. So next morning, uh, you know, you wake up and now you're down there and you, you got the rest of all the other challenges ahead. This right. particular day was, uh, we were still in a, in a pretty isolated area and you can see that again, no trail. We had to get around the lake. So it's a lot of just rock scrambling. Um, I remember feeling really good about the fact that you guys kind of let me lead a lot. Um, mm -hmm. so I had, had long legs and I was kind of finding the best ways to go. And uh, it really gave me confidence, you know, to be part of the group, but also, you know, be able to kind of lead the way a little bit. Yeah. So. Right, right behind you, you can see a little bit of beat down dirt. And that was the extent of anything that was a trail. And as we went around the right hand side of the lake, there was nothing. It was, no. I remember there were some car sized boulders. Oh, there yeah. we go. That's Pretty it. Yeah, like that was it. the back. That's that's the end of that first big scramble. <laughs> you know? That was that took a toll on a few people. Yeah. Sure. 
Yeah, that was uh, it. W it was pretty hard, but you know, then we hit an area called the Darwin Bench, which I, I know you particularly love that area. Yeah, it's um, gorgeous. Just such a neat uh, area. Like again, you're kind of still up there pretty high. We're up at 11, 12,000, 11,000 feet probably, ten to eleven. But you're, it's you know, you got some green starting to come in. Lots of waterfalls, lots of beautiful flowers. Good place to stop for lunch. And it just it it was a really neat picking your way through. There was a bit of a trail through that, so that kind of gave us a kind of a start point. But that's that was the last bit of that day before we hit the JNT. So um, kind of the last part of those first two full days. It was uh, amazing. Beautiful nice. area, Darwin, Darwin Bench. And then you get into Evolution Valley and Evolution Lake. Now you're on the, the JMT again. This, If you've never been up there, this, these names might not mean anything. This is a pretty well-known area. This particular lake, I think we had to search for quite a while to find a campsite that wasn't already taken. Right, because there were there were now we were starting to get into competition for campsites and yeah. and uh, there's always campsites to be found. It's just how long do you want to spend looking for it? And yeah. if I'm if I remember right, some or maybe a different lake. We dropped someone dropped lakes at uh, dropped packs at one side of the lake, and then the other party went around, and we were trying to yeah. find spots, and we didn't want to come back or didn't want to go the wrong way because we that were tired. This might have been it, actually. I think yeah. we ended up just settling in. And yeah, you don't want to end up being a mile from the lake either, especially at that point when you want to be able to. Yeah. This was the first experience I had with jumping in the lake. Um, and I realized, and I know, Dan, you love this, but then, and Mike, we all, Rich, um, Sandra has her own way of getting clean, but we would just jump in this uh, cold, cold lake. But my, it was beautiful. It was amazing my, after a long day. My method is to, is to stand in my knees or my thigh until I can't feel my feet and then decide I'm, maybe I'm going to get out or just then just jump in and then immediately run out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trying to, try to make it sound like it was a real like, heroic kind of well thought out plan, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was, I'm a chicken. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Beautiful sunsets. Uh, Dan's little hat and tent there. And uh, yeah, that was the last night there. So then we were for the next couple of days, we were going to be on the JMT. So uh, this next day we kind of hiked along and we were heading up to something called the, the mirror, well, mirror pass. And there's kind of a famous hut there at the Mirror Pass. And if you can spot on the photo, right in the middle, about three quarters of the way up, there's a little uh, triangle there. That's the peak of the of this little hut, uh, which looks like that. Right. And uh, that was great because, again, that was, again, we our group tends to split up pretty well. We don't, I mean, we always stay where we know we're going to get together again, but but we often have a good uh, half a mile between us sometimes, between just the speed different people go. A lot of groups don't do it that way. Um, I appreciate that we do because it's kind of sometimes going uphill. You know, some people like going a little faster and some don't, and it's just the opposite on the downhill. So it's uh, it's good to have that flexibility. This particular one, I, I think I was in the lead heading up um, to this hut, and I remember just looking at the elevation and my watch, and it was a it was a great example of setting goals. Where I think I said I got to be there by noon, and I got there at eleven fifty seven. Nice, so proud of myself. You know, sat down and enjoyed my. Nutella or whatever I had. I <laughs> the, other, the other thing that always strikes me about our uh, summit or pass photos is almost always we're wearing our, our wind shell. It, it's amazing. You, you could be sweating like a, like a pig going up the, the, up the uh, pass. And as soon as you get to the top and the wind picks up, you take off your pack. It's like time to layer up. Yeah, absolutely. So I uh, just real quick, this, this area, this area behind where all the scree is, I think was where we thought we might be our, uh, our next day if we were going to do that extra bit of work in Ionian Basin, but that, that got scrubbed. <laughs> I think, I yeah. Think yeah. It, it, that's trail us in and trail us out. It looks yeah. like it's, as I think, as you said the other day, it's still there, but after our last person got up to the top uh, and they looked at that other pass, I, I seem to remember someone punching me in the arm. So yeah, we're I not doing that. Some, some threats. So then the next, the rest of that day was heading down the, the trail. And this is where I think I took pictures of a thousand waterfalls. It's like so beautiful water everywhere, waterfalls everywhere, which led to my next great lesson, which was there's water everywhere. You don't have to carry so much of it to you. Oh, yeah. I, I had a habit of, of always having like probably two liters in my bladder, another liter in a bottle. I just, I wanted to make sure I had enough water. I like, I like water. But, uh, you know, everybody who's done the desert camp knows how much uh, a gallon of water weighs. So I was carrying almost a gallon all the time just because. And then I'd see you stop every now and then and pull at your filter and in three minutes have a nice, fresh, you know, cold yeah. water and on you went. And so that was a, that was a good lesson. Lots of, lots of water. If, right. I mean, if you're finding a place with lots of water, that's uh, good. 
if you're someplace where there's less of it, then take advantage when you find it, right? And that seemed to be one of our day's routines. You know, just before we, we leave camp or maybe over breakfast, we'll bust out the map and um, kind of see what's, what's in store for the next day, what our mileage, what our elevation is, but also to kind of see what our water sources are, to know that we're going to have five miles of a dry stretch or to know that we're going to see water, if there's going to be a big water crossing or, you know, those yeah. sorts of things. Yeah. So, so good. educate, educate ourselves. Yep. So this was uh, the next day we were down near the end of where we were going to get off the JMT and uh, you know, just again, wall people. Um, no, there's, there's something on Sandra's hat there. Yeah. That, that, that there's a, uh, a, um, I guess a little flower arrangement. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, it's a, it's a Hawaiian lei. That was the morning after um, the surprise luau. I didn't tell anybody and I packed an entire Hawaiian luau in my backpack. Now I'm relatively lightweight, so I weighed everything, but everybody had their own lei. I had a three foot inflatable uh, palm tree. You did. Uh, I had umbrellas for the umbrella drinks. Absolutely. And, oh, and I had a couple grass skirts too. You did. Yeah, it was, uh, it was amazing. It was, uh, I, that I didn't realize this was, this has obviously become a tradition on our trips. And maybe if we talk about some other trips at a later date, I can tell some of the other stories, especially the, there's a couple good ones about superheroes and <laughs> captain and captains. Uh, <laughs> we'll leave those for another time. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. That first, that having that and breaking that out, that was just, a, it was a blast. And then we kept our lays for the rest of the trip. We were wearing yeah. them. Places, now, I which carried of course in. leaves you open to lots of questions. So you yeah. meet lots of people and you tell them what you're doing. And... I carried them in, but I made you guys carry them out. Wow. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt you right now. Um, say we've got maybe another five minutes and then we'll save some time for Q and a, um, which reminds me if you got any questions uh, for, for Kelly or for I, or just general questions about this trip, put them in the Q and a and we'll catch them towards the end. So sure. Okay. Continue on. So, Anyway, that uh, you know, the rest of the trip was just more of the same. There's some pretty cool things. This is a pretty famous uh, monster on the JMT. Uh, Got to be careful you don't get stuck in his, uh, <laughs> jaws. Yeah. So, so that's kind of fun. But eventually, like anything, we managed to uh, hit the point where we went towards Ducey Basin and Bishop's Pass and got off the uh, the JMT. So the the traffic kind of lessened a little bit. But uh, and then some. I don't know. I want to. I want to blame it on a on a horse packer guest but that decided to graffiti that awesome aluminum sign. It is like the coolest sign with, with the Muir uh, profile etched in there and some. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was very annoying. Yeah. How's that? That's a, that's a nice word. <laughs> Thank so you. Next, <laughs> next night we found a really cool campsite. We were a little early because now that we had cut that kind of a day out of our trip, we had a couple of little shorter days, which was nice. It gave us time to do a little more exploring. We found this whole little river near our campsite that had, these rocks it may be hard to see, but they're almost like a little water slide. They're very slippery, but it was like shallow blow. So we were never worried about, so we were playing on this, these really cool water slides. Um, yeah, this one was also there. We did not choose that water slide. <laughs> the last water slide. It's an awesome view, but last one you'd ever see. Yeah. It went a long, it went a long, long, long way. Um, <laughs> But now we're down, it's 8,000 feet, we're in the trees, you know, it's like, again, this trip had so many different kind of biomes, it was, uh, it was wonderful. Um, next day we're heading, so now we're just looking down, we're heading towards an area called Ducey Basin, um, crossing these, you know, more waterfalls, stop there to play in the rocks. Uh, Ducey Basin, I just, we, we spent, ended up spending, I think, a night, and then, I mean, it really was a short day, so we had almost the whole day there. Right. Um, I remember uh, I went off by myself for a couple hours just hiking around the lakes. I know Sandra and Rich went off, you know, and it was just, it was so beautiful because these, everywhere you went, there's just these beautiful views. You're kind of by yourself. We were back to where there's really no people around. Uh, it was it's such a, you, you feel really good about it and you're, you know, where you are, you're using all your tools to make sure you stay found, you know, and uh, using the map, like doing all the smart things, but still just, you know, letting yourself go a little bit and enjoying it. It's wonderful. What, what's really cool is when you look at Ducey Basin on a map, it doesn't look, it looks like it's flat-ish or there's not a whole lot of terrain change, but I, I forget what the contour in intervals are, but there's a tremendous amount of contour change, but it's 50 to 100 foot contour change. So yeah. it only shows us a few lines, but there's all these little pockets and little hidden areas and, you could go over one rise and have a whole nother vista, a whole nother view that you didn't know was there. 
So if I was just trying to do like a four day trip, I would go to South Lake and just go the reverse we did go to Ducey Basin, spend a couple of days and turn around and go back. I mean, it's that beautiful. That would be, that would be a phenomenal trip. You'd, you'd go over Bishop Pass to come in, but yeah, that would, that, I think that would be an outstanding idea. There's, and because there's other peaks around, I mean, there's these beautiful lakes. We, I mean, the clouds, this was actually the only day we had much in the way of bad weather. We had a little bit of rain. Um, we were really lucky. And I, I kind of figured that was my, the, the great thing. I think the next year we went, we were good till like the third day and all of a sudden the, the first bad storm I ever lived through. <laughs> so, but you know, I, again, there's so many pictures, the clouds, they, every time you look at it, they'd be a different color and you'd take another picture. You know, it was just a beautiful area. Um, we spent a lot of time there. Like I said, the next day we spent a little more time. There's sort of a lower Ducey basin, an upper Ducey basin. This was upper. So we did some more exploring that area. Um, even if you spend some time there, there's all these peaks. This one is named Isosceles Peak, which I just thought, me being a perfect. math nerd, I thought that was uh, perfect. Uh, definitely stands out, hard to miss. And then eventually we got to Bishop Pass, and there we are breaking out the jackets again because uh, 12,000 feet. So we kind of climbed back up, and, and we knew we were into the, uh, the home stretch. At this point, I think we ran into a couple donkeys that were coming from the resupplying the ranger station. Right, <laughs> so right. we had, had to share the road a little bit, but... Uh, you know, a little more exploring, and eventually, we our very last night. Um, it, it's just, you know, we we did run into people that were here. They were fishing. If you remember that, there was a father and his daughter right. and his son were fishing, and yeah, and yeah, you can. Water. This is where you're starting to feel like you're getting back into the front country, and you can. Yeah. And and we we've done this a couple times where we've been relatively close. We could have made it a really long day and gotten out, but we wanted to spend one more day in the back country before we go. And right. Exactly right. I think we could have got out, but we just, yeah. and uh, one of the things that was nice too, is we had met some people. We met them again. I don't think they camped here, but we had talked to them a couple of times and we knew that we were going to have to, when we got to South Lake, um, have someone give us a ride to North Lake rather right. than just get straight out. And uh, this nice two ladies that we met, we kind of got to know, and it was, we got to know well enough that we figured out they were going to be there ending the same time we were. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> and, we, and they were nice enough to offer, you know, one of us got a ride and went and picked up the, the car and brought it back. Yeah. So that's another one of those lessons about, uh, you know, being, being human out there and, and enjoying, I mean, it's nice to have isolation, but when you run into people, you can learn from them and you can be a, yeah. a nice human. And you have a law about the, how far you are from front country and how, uh, how good people are. <laughs> it, it's, it's more of a theorem. Yeah. Of uh, I, the ability the the niceness of someone is inversely proportional to the distance from the trailhead. That's you're funny. in the city park, you got major a holes. When you're in the back country, everybody's the best, but your best yeah. butt. So, so that you know, that's pretty much it. I uh, that was the end of it. There's South Lake, and uh, and we're done. Cool. Beautiful. I got a couple couple questions for us. So you could okay. you could stop sharing your screen, and we'll yep. oh oh that's actually a good one to leave it on. Um, okay. So I think we answered the question on the luau. So that was that was good. Um, the uh, what was the? Do you remember what the total mileage was for that trip? Um, I. I think it would have been, I think our original plan was about 50. I think we ended up down at about 41, 42 by the time we. Yeah, um, that sounds about right. Okay. So yeah, for what did, now the, the, the trick, and, and I think this bears a, a, an entire episode to just talk about off tra off trail travel, which I haven't done a whole lot, but it's so variable. Um, when, you know, as, once we look, I, I read uh, some books on, on, in, in and out of Ionian Basin. And it sounds like, oh yeah, it, it's totally doable. Yeah. And you look at the elevation and it looks like it's the same elevation as Muir Pass. All I got to do is contour straight across and go, you're golden. <laughs> yeah. And then you realize you're beat up. You've been at elevation all week and, and then someone gets a trail name that's after their elevation sickness, um, which, oh, okay. So that was another question that came up. Uh, did people have trail names and, and, um, we do. I don't know if everybody had a trail yeah. name by that time. I, I know uh, that. Yeah. I don't know if we did either. I know we, we definitely had in the past. We've since uh, had patches made with our trail names because we, I know I had one before that, but I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's, <laughs> it's a, uh, we so, can tell that story a different time. Maybe, maybe next travel log, but there uh, you go. But yeah, the, the, in, re, in relation to uh, elevation sickness and, uh, and not using Diamox, even though that particular person not identifying whom, um, <coughs> <laughs> oh, sorry i was a, just uh, I developed a, a trail name of 10k and anytime they're over 10,000 foot elevation they're dying they're dying uh okay let's see if i had any more any other questions we got the, the that and then one more let me take one more look um oh where did um 
where did the trail intersect the JMT? So let's see, see if I can remember. I have a pretty good idea. Do you, do you recall exactly where that was? It was probably a mile north of uh, Evolution Lake. In that the sounds Evolution about Lake. right. It yeah. was at a pretty, pretty good elevation. Um, we were still at about 10, 10,000, 9,800 feet, something like that. Yeah. It's interesting as you're going along the JMT, you might miss it and think it's a use trail, but obviously yeah. when you're, you know, it's a, it's a tiny, tiny trail because it, it really is kind of a use trail at that point, even though other, others imply that it's, it's a use trail. Yeah. And then we left the JMT. Um, like, like I said, there's a ranger station and there's a pretty well-known junction, um, you know, probably 10 miles, 12 miles past the mirror, uh, pass. And that's where we left. That was lower. I was down at like 7,000 feet, 7,500. Okay. Um, so would, would you stop sharing the screen and oh, sure. no worries. The, um, what I'm, I'm just going to kind of, kind of wrap this up and, and leave it on a, on a two thoughts. Um, we need to acknowledge, actually, we should have started with a toast to earth day. So yes, to earth earth, day. To happy earth day, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, let you know that if you wanted to rewatch this or see another episode, they're going to be on YouTube. I'll put it on tonight or tomorrow. I'll be on YouTube uh, on Wednesday, Wind Down with Dan. And then next week, Dave and Sandra and I are going to talk about food strategies and some ideas on food. Food is, there's a lot to food. I'm probably going to have about three, at least three episodes about food. So this is going to be kind of an overview and an intro. Lots to talk about with food. So keep that in mind. So glad you all came. Kelly, thanks so much for joining us. That was a blast. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Happy birthday, everybody. Take care, all. We'll see you next all right. week.